This is a problem that uses Newton's version of Kepler's third law. Let's start by reading the question. It says our moon's average distance from the Earth is 3.844 times 10 to the 5 kilometers. That's about 384,000 kilometers. And the question is, what is the moon's orbital period in days? Well, Newton's version of Kepler's third law is usually written this way. P squared, that P stands for period, is equal to 4 times pi squared. Pi is just a constant, 3.14, divided by capital G, which is also a constant, times m1 plus m2. And these two masses are the thing that's orbiting and the thing that's being orbited. It doesn't matter which is one or two because you can write these in any order and they're the same. Then all this is times a cubed. a is the average distance and we need to cube it. So let's look at these um, constants and variables. So just as a reminder, pi 3.14 is fine. Um, you know, it, it keeps going and going and going, 3.14159 and on and on and on, but 3.14 is fine. Pi has no units. G is another constant, and we write it 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, but G has units. So the units, if we're going to use this number, are meters cubed per kilogram second squared. This is really important because since G has units, every other number that goes into this equation has to have the same type of units or the numbers won't cancel out. Or I should say the units won't cancel out. So we need to be very careful with our units. Well, we're trying to figure out P, so we don't, we don't have a number for that, but A is another variable, and A is the distance. The distance shows up in the problem up here. So 3.844 times 10 to the 5 kilometers. All right, watch out for the units. This is in kilometers. G uses meters, so we need to convert this. So I'm going to multiply this by 1,000, which is the same thing as 10 to the 3, because that's how many meters are in a kilometer. So this number turns into 3.844 times 10 to the 8 meters. All right, next, the masses. Hmm. There don't seem to be any masses listed in the question. What masses are we looking for? Well, we're talking about the moon and earth, so the masses of the moon and earth. They're not listed in the question because this is the sort of thing that you can actually look up pretty easily. Um, in textbook, um, online, you can get these numbers pretty reliably. So m1 plus m2. We'll let m1 be the earth, although like I said, it doesn't matter which one is 1 and 2. So that's 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And then M2 is going to be the moon then. 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. All right. 22 is a lot less than 24. Well, it's too less, but it's a smaller number. If we wanted, we could approximate this by just ignoring the mass of the moon actually, and we would get approximately the right answer. But if we want to be a little more precise, then we'll go ahead and add these two together. And so m1 plus m2 is going to equal 6.04 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And kilograms, those units are just fine because g, um, the constant g has units of kilograms in it. All right, we are ready to put stuff in our equation. So I'm going to rewrite this. Now we've got p squared over here, and we really just want p, but I'm going to choose to deal with that sort of at the very end. All right, so that's going to be 4 
times 3.14 squared, that's pi, divided by, I've got to fit a lot of numbers down here, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 meters cubed per kilogram second squared. I'm going to multiply this by the two masses added together, which was 6.04 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Ooh. And then we need to multiply all this by A cubed. A was that distance in meters. 3.844 times 10 to the 8 meters. And we're going to need to cube that or raise it to the third power. OK, let's stop for just a second and take a look at some units. The kilograms are going to cancel out right here. And I'm going to deal with the rest um, in just a moment. We've got all the numbers here. You could go ahead and um, put this in your calculator and see what you get. I'm going to go through step by step. Um, so I'm going to pick a couple of numbers and do what needs to be done with them. And, and I'll keep writing this in a few steps before I get to the final answer. I get myself a little more room here. So in my first step, 4 times pi squared turns out to be 39.48. Um, you're going to be doing that a lot, 4 times pi squared. So you might want to write this down someplace handy um, so, that, so that you can use it and not have to punch it in your calculator over and over and over again. And then on the bottom here, I multiplied g times the sum of the masses, and those multiplied together work out to be 4.03 times 10 to the 14, and the units, the kilograms, canceled. So we're left with meters cubed over seconds squared down here. And then A cubed, this 3.844 times 10 to the 8, raised to the third power, that worked out to be 5.68 Oops, what happened to that 6? Six? 6, 8 times 10 to the 25. And the units, we had meters. Now we have meters cubed. All right. The meters cubed on A cubed are going to cancel with the meters cubed that were on G. All right. Of course, need more space. So P squared. Keep working on this. Three point, or sorry, thirty-nine point four eight divided by four point oh three times ten to the fourteen. That works out to be nine point eight zero times ten to the minus fourteen. We have we're dividing by one over second squared. So the units here are actually second squared times 5.68 times 10 to the 25. And the meters cubed canceled, so no units there. So finally, p squared equals 5.57 times 10 to the 12 seconds squared. All right, we are almost done. We've got just one more step. We need to get just p. So that is going to be the square root of this number. Square root of 5.57. And this works out to be 2.36 times 10 to the 6 seconds. Super! we got to watch out for units, though. We've got seconds. So is our answer in seconds? The problem asked us to figure it out in days, because you might remember we, we talked about this. The, um, the period of the moon in days should be about 27.3. So let's, let's go ahead and see what we get. So to convert this, we start with 2.36 times 10 to the 6 seconds times I'm going to go ahead and do one hour. 
that's a three, 3,600 seconds. You could do from seconds to minutes to hours if you like. And then finally to get days, one day, then is the 24 hours. So seconds will cancel, hours will cancel, and I'll be left with days. And I get 27.3. So if this were a homework problem, don't forget to state your answer um, in a complete sentence. So it could be something as simple as the orbital period of the moon is 27.3 days. And you're done. Good job.